This is IBM Museum, and still with a very busy bench behind me. But let me get the internal webcam off and get flipped around just to describe what I've got going on here. And I've got my Maxmall 30 powered down right now. I went through and used it earlier to copy over files and just work with some diskettes uh, to prepare for this video. But the main aspect, I mean, you notice that the, the zip drive, that parallel port zip drive has got the light on, but I'll go through to where this is connected right now and show the steps to what I've done. On the top here is an IBM PC convertible, 5140. And I'll give a link in the video description to a page at the Ardent Tool covering the 5140. And certainly people have seen that in previous videos on my channel. Now I've gone through and I have the LCD screen off the top of it. I go through and do the video capture, which I'll do in a moment, as an, just as a better way to see what's going on the screen. This setup is with the video capture is just like a CGA screen connected to this display. It's not quite like the, uh, the LCD display, but it allows me to show the video a lot better because it would be very hard to see the screen and to see what's going on. Now, that is a, what they call a slice. It's on the back of the PC convertible that does that CGA output. And I've gone through for this video and I've put another slice on the back of it as well. Now the slice I've put on is one of these. And so this, and this is the way effectively it hooks in, hooks in this side and it's got a latch on this side, you know, that's a little bit discolored. It's it's a little bit more yellow um, than the rest of the body of the of the slice. Connects to the bus here. We'll see a little bit more of this and what is inside this unit here in a moment. But on the one side, we have a serial port. And on the other side, we have a parallel port. And if that parallel port gives you ideas, talking about that parallel port connected zip drive, you've got it exactly right. Now inside this slice, this is the circuit board. And it's actually in the, within the slice, it would be effectively like this, it has the bus connector that does a pass through to the next slice, or you have a block out if there's not any um, slice that's connected to the back of it, just keeps that bus connection um, out of the open air as it is. And so the, the circuitry is on the other side because you have the, there's your serial port on that end and the parallel port on this. So here is the circuitry with the parallel port on the left here, serial port on the right. It's a little bit inverted. So you have a UART chip there and then another PLCC chip. And this is actually marked as an, an IBM chip 61x6027 we'll get that on the ASIC list in other words uh, meaning a, a probably a custom chip that IBM has done or marked um, to to run most likely the parallel port uh, because the um, the serial port drivers Here, if I can get my camcorder to focus, it's the serial port side. And then it's got some resistor arrays and things like that. 
Um, some of these may be inverted for how they're presented on the screen. And then parallel port on that side. So that's what I've got connected in. Now, for this, I went through, and of course, the PC convertible is a diskette-based system. Does not have effectively a hard drive, even as far as I'm aware, even in this retro computer age, no one has gone through and put compact flash in a little, uh, a little slice or something else that goes through and acts as a hard drive or acts as storage in this instance. And the diskette drives are 720 KB, low density or double density. They're not the high density 1.44 megabyte. It does have the two diskette drives. I do have to confess, I did preliminary steps for this video just to make sure because I knew this convertible. I knew that we were able to boot from the A drive last time, but I had no idea of the condition of the B drive. And you can see I've got some diskettes around, even the PC convertible diskettes. I went through to look on my DOS version because I knew I had to get an earlier DOS version that would be capable of running most likely in less RAM. And looking for the PC convertible came with, with uh, DOS 3.2. I looked for DOS 3.3. Uh, I had a lot of newer copies, of course, um, that I wasn't so uh, certain. And they were on high-density diskettes, as it were. Now, I can work with that on the Ball 30. And this has got, I mean, I can go through and I can even create a, a, a boot diskette of the 720KB on this machine and try later DOS. I mean, that might be a thing. But I did come across some diskettes that I... Went through and made from having the 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 DOS package for there's the MS DOS 4.01 startup and there's a MS DOS 4.01 working now DOS 4 and the the 4.01 came out pretty quickly after uh, 4.0 because there was some some issues. And this is a time when you're going through, as I say, these are these are double density diskettes. And going through, you had a, a boot diskette. And if you had the second drive, like the PC convertible here, this is a, a set exactly designed, as it were, for the PC convertible, where you have the working diskette. And you could go through and you could, if you only had an A drive, you could go through and swap diskettes after boot. But I do want to go through and we'll initially boot from these diskettes. Now I went through and I with the with the double density, I had spare diskettes and I went through and worked with formatting system diskettes to work on the PC convertible. I I did, you know, as as it is, you know where I go through and I duplicate my efforts have at least two boot diskettes if I'm going through and doing a video because I want to have a fallback plan. Just be able to swap in another diskette. If we get one that doesn't work, that's, you know, that's fine in this instance. Now, uh, so we've got the startup in A and the working in B. And the first thing we want to look at here, and I'm going to go through and I'll just go through to control delete this machine has actually been on this entire time the zip drive is actually connected to that parallel port side but i don't have the driver the palm zip driver on this boot diskette now it goes through and it does a battery warning first so i'm going to go through Let's get the video capture. It just showed a battery icon on the screen, um, meaning that it um, that it didn't. And I'll get myself back on the screen as well. And I don't know why it goes through in this instance, and uh, it's a bit odd. It does give the the line, and it does another line of. Uh, of re 
of reporting what uh, DOS version that this is. Now, in this instance, uh, and of course, it's the A drive. We've booted from that A, A diskette drive. And it actually has an auto exec got bat and um, files on this. It didn't prompt me for the uh, date and time. So it does, you do know that that has an auto exec dot bat. Now, one of the things I was interested in is let's go through and do, and of course, the the keyboard for the PC convertible. I don't have where I can do a, a keyboard remote. I have to turn around to face the unit. Let's do a, a directory listing. And this has the really odd occasion where it leaves on the A access light. And actually what we may want to do, let's do a directory and pause the slash P listing. Just to kind of show. Okay, so we're looking through and we see things in alphabetical order. The one program I'm looking for here is DOS debug. And that is not on the startup diskette. We have, you know, the format. I was able to go through and prepare a, a system diskette that we can boot from. But that DOS debug is on. The and I'm just gonna switch over to the that diskette. We'll do a you know the 720 KB diskettes, just not all the files fit on that. Um I'm trying to see. I mean they have a little bit of little bit of leftover room, maybe. And let's do a directory on the B drive. And we see additional files there, including basic and basic A. I mean, we could go through and access the ROM basic uh, from here. Okay. But it did show the, the DOS debug. And so I want to go through, we're switched over to the B drive. I want to run, go through and run debug. And viewers of my channel, I mean, they remember this particular, we're going to do a dump. I'm going to write it all out rather than just kind of abbreviate it. And that's going through to where I'm dumping the contents of a particular area of memory to the screen. Um, that 0040 colon zero is the area that I'm dumping on uh, to the screen. The, the that memory, those memory locations, a length of ten in hexadecimal, sixteen effective bytes one line of information and the in the dump command for DOS debug. Because here we're interested in seeing those first two locations. And of course remember reverse order that F803 is normally 03 F8. And that is the IO port address of the serial port. Okay. We don't, we just see zeros for the remainder until midway. And then we see that 7803. And of course that is inverted. 0378 is the LPT1, that parallel port on the PC convertible right now. So from that slice, that is what those ports are. I mean, that's a default. They're, they're not able to go through and um, it'd be interesting, can you stack more of those serial and parallel <laughs> slices and see if they get a different address or most likely it is conflict because there's not really any provisions in their jumper settings or anything else on that board to go through and to set addresses um, on this. It's just decoded from that, from that bus connector. So uh, we know that the the um 
the serial port and the parallel port. And we're mainly interested, of course, in the parallel port for the zip drive. We're going to do Q for quit. Okay. Now we didn't see the zip driver load on boot. Um, and I went through and I created these boot diskettes and I'll show the, the contents on just, there's not even much at all. In fact, I'll go through, we're going to go uh, put this in the A drive. We'll switch back over to the A drive and I won't even have to give a pause this time because I know that there is just so few files. Now there's some hidden files here for the boot files, um, but I have that formatted with the slash S so it puts the system files on there. Command.com uh, is visible. And then there's the, uh, uh, for the MS-DOS, there's the two hidden files um, that will be on the diskette as well. So the system can go through and boot. Now you do see a, a config.sys there, in a, and I'll go over what that is in a moment. And then I've copied over the Palm zip driver from my max.mol30. Just after I format the diskette, I had the Palm zip driver over here on the mol30, copied it over. Now for the config sys, what I did was, I'll just repeat it to where I did a copy con config dot s y s okay just making sure i have all the characters okay what that's meaning is copy from the console and the console in this in instance means the keyboard um not necessarily the display that's attached we see the the items that were copying from but it's just the the display and the keyboard in combination being the console port uh, or the uh, excuse me the the console um device in in the true word of of dos a device and so it's just saying hey copy from the keyboard what we put in here to the file name config sys and we're we already had the config sys there but this is what we have in it i'll do it in capital letters just as device equals I just again I want to make sure that I have that in there device equals palm zip dot sys that is the palm zip driver file we press enter we go to a new blank line and what you do to go through and get out of that copy con process is you do control Z. Okay, and that puts that that caret and then the Z character and then you press enter. That's how it knows it's into file you're into file. That's a a line effectively a line editor. You're going through and copying one line at a time. I could go through and I could write more out. Um but you know, this one line, and then you have to have a line feed, character turn line feed. You do the control Z, press another um, character turn line feed or the inner button on the keyboard. Um, and it tells you one file is copied, copied from the console to the diskette. And we had that in there before. Um, we still see the same effect of three files. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a control delete. And this time you'll get to see that battery warning. And I probably need to go through and pull that. Um, I think I had problems with that door was with the alkaline or it's give me the not alkaline, the the NICAD liquid or something else, the crystal. It just it's got where it was sealed. So there's the battery warning. And it does beep at you. The system beeps at you. Probably you could have heard that if I wasn't talking. Okay, so it's going to and loading DOS. Okay. So we get the Palm Zip driver that's loaded there. 
and it says drive C. Now there's no auto exec dot bat file on that boot diskette. So it prompts us for the time and date. And I've gone through and it has the current time and date. I'm gonna go enter for the new time. My goodness, it's getting late. <laughs> but I'm to the A, you know, to the the command prompt on the A drive. And it tells us that now our zip drive is C. We want to make sure we've got the disk, the cartridge in the drive. And so if we go through to do C, there's our effective hard drive, 100 megabyte hard drive on our PC convertible now. Now, remember, I mean, you can't boot from the zip drive because it requires that Palm zip driver. Now, I'm going to flip over to the, the, um, camera, the camcorder just for a moment, just to kind of show we've got our diskettes out here and everything else. But this is the planer for the... Now, what I'm aware that you see all that phase difference. Let me get over to the camcorder only output. And this is the motherboard planer, whatever, that's in the PC convertible. I've shown this before. Uh, these are the diskette drive connections, A drive, B drive. And this is under the keyboard tray. So this is those memory, the PC convertible memory. There's the display and the keyboard connectors of how they connect in. There is the power connection because there's a there's a power block that goes through and connects into here on this side. And then the bus connector on the back that these slices are connecting onto and you're adding on. You're just layering on uh, the, you know, the slices that you use. In this instance, the CRT slice that does the CGA output and that parallel serial one that we've just added. Um, there is a connector for the internal modem. I, I do have some of these around. Uh, on this unit, it's capped off, but I do have other PC convertibles. They have the internal modem and I have an, uh, a brand new inbox. I've got a uh, internal modem as well. You've got the ROM BIOS for the PC convertible. And the PC convertible was one of the last systems that in the two volume tech ref set that I've got, it does list the full in that volume two, it lists the, has the entire BIOS listing. Very helpful for understanding the machine. Now it's got, uh, this is one of the first systems from IBM that went through and did integrated chipsets to instead of the discrete chips that would have been just huge laying out all those separate um, IO port chips, uh, timers, um, all the all the controllers um, that happen. In fact, it's got the diskette controller there is one effectively discrete chip for, for of course, writing the diskette drives. And the reason I, you know, the for the Palm Zip, on my Mac Small 30, it's got a V30 CPU. And that should have been, if I go old enough with the iOmega driver, it should have been able to run that. I don't have an old enough version, so the Palm Zip is just a way to get around it. I was able to, to, to do that, to get in and run the Palm Zip from the Mac Small 80. Now, on... On the PC convertible, it actually has an Intel. Yeah, get it to where the the light from the the ring light effectively line up, and so that, as you see, that's an eighty C eighty eight from Intel, and even fuzz or something else there. 
I was looking to see if that's even kind of like an, that's not really an S-Fact, but Intel 1978. And of course, that's a, a, a plastic leaded chip carrier. Or, I mean, excuse me, that'd be a plastic flat quad pack, <laughs> effectively, um, of how it's mounted, you know, surface mounted to the board. And it's not a V20, it is an 8088 CPU. And just that C in there makes it a static device that's able to go through and halt. There are V dot, uh, excuse me, V20s, NEC V20s. They're the same package, even in some of the terminals uh, that I have. And there are models that go through and are static and can go through and stop the clock. But, you know, this would require the palm zip guaranteed. And so going through and, and testing it, now, we'll get our, where we have our, effectively our C drive. And we're just gonna do a directory listing. Remember, I moved some files from the Maxmall 30 onto this 100 megabyte disk. Now at the end, you know, it's still got the activity light of the, the zip drive blinking away there. And just for the speed of the system, there's just so much space to work with that the system says, wow, <laughs> you know. Um, and for the DOS 4, and I, and that would be the other concern that I would have with, um, and this is addressed on the Palm Zip page. I'll go through and I'll put a link to the Palm Zip location on the web, the information about it, where you can get it. Um, and it has a demo version you can use to test things. And then if you want to go for it, just like I did, eight euros gets you the online version. Uh, from Kloss, I believe. I, I probably couldn't pronounce the last name or anything else like that. But I've moved some files, some programs, over to the disk. I went there and I did a test for, uh, initially for MSD. And you could have these on diskette, certainly. You know, if, uh, if they fit. Uh, you could have them on either your boot diskette or your working diskette and be able to run them as well. Some of these may go through. It'd be interesting. I want to run through as many as I can. But there is your Microsoft Diagnostic MSD. And we see it, in this case, in color. In color, as we've gone through as in previous videos, it's a little bit hard to understand what keyboard presses. Now, F5 takes it to the monochrome output. And you see the disk drives, we've got A, B, and C, LPT ports and uh, COM ports. We've got one, uh, it goes through MSD, it's got that bug again saying three LPT ports. Um, we just got that one, the zip drive's connected to, the COM port. Windows is not detected. <laughs> I don't know if Microsoft anticipated back then that Windows would be where it is now, but um, I'm not gonna go through any of the RQ status or TSR programs, device drivers. The device driver just saw that palm zip. Um, it has a game adapter. Again, I, uh, be interesting how, um, it interprets that. I do have a program on here that I want to look at a little bit more deeper in a way, um, to see if it shows, um, because the, another discrete chip on the convertible and it was hidden under the diskette. 
um, drive. Let me go through. And so that's right side up. And there's the Motorola MC146818. It's an AFN package in this case. But this is actually a CMOS. Um, well, it's, it's, it's a CMOS RAM, but it is the, um, the real-time clock of this board. Now, it uses the PC convertible does use the real-time clock functionality for the built-in, but the CMOS RAM contents, and you have to rem remember with the PC convertible, you have the battery, you have the power supply. Um, so it does effectively back up the contents of that of that storage space. But it the PC convertible uses that CMOS RAM contents for different than what a 286 class system would do for storing that like the it still stores the configuration in there, but it does it in a different format. And that's all reported in that technical reference. The um there is the uh, the tech refs books. I talked about the volume one, volume two for the PC convertible. They will be in that directory um, that I'll provide in the video description. And so you can look through um, to how that, if you want to go as deep as that, to look on how the equipment is saved away, the, the configuration on the PC convertible. Um, so resuming there, we have OS version. It correctly does MS-DOS version 4.01, no network detected. It's a CGA of an unknown manufacturer is what that unknown means uh, for video. And of course it's it's got that CRT slice and we're doing the nice video capture here. Memory, it's got, it's got 512K. It's got four of those 128 KB memory cards underneath the keyboard tray. And computer it says IBM slash IBM, and that's the ma computer manufacturer and the BIOS manufacturer. It says 8088 or 8086. And Microsoft for MSD, they go through and uh, they are detecting the 8088 and the 8086, uh, just saying one or the other, they're they're not going through and splitting that level. Uh, if they could, it'd be a hard, uh, be a challenge to tell those in um, in software. You just would mainly have to operate from the known machine type, maybe. So let's do a P for the computer. And so computer name is IBM, BIOS manufacturer IBM. It does that BIOS version does, uh, that's the ROM bio, or excuse me, the ROM basic in, in, the, um, in the ROM chip. And at least it identifies it here, the BIOS category, IBM PC convertible. And it's got that BIOS ID, that, that's the BIOS model, followed by the BIOS submodel and the BIOS revision and in this instance, F9, the PC convertible is the sole system out there that I'm aware of. Um, and that should be just about, I mean, I know I have a good enough knowledge that F9 for the BIOS model is unique to the PC convertible. No other system out there does. And IBM did that, those, those BIOS models by the CPU typically that the machine was issued with. Um, and so the the bio sub model is just zero zero. It's the only one of that type. There's not a bio sub model of zero one or so on. And then it's got the the BIOS revision of just zero zero, the initial BIOS. And I don't think that the PC convertible had any later BIOS that they went through and changed it around. And of course, it, uh, for the BIOS date of the 13th of September, 1985, 
And again, the processor is identifies as either an 8088 or an 8086. We know it is the 80C88. And math coprocessors are none. There's not even a place on the PC convertible to put a math coprocessor. No socket for it or anything else. Keyboard non-enhanced. It's got the keyboard that's just built into the unit. Uh, bus type is ISA XT Classic Bus. Well, I guess that's what it calls the PC convertible bus of here, you know, here, the 8 bit bus uh, that has the address and data lines multiplexed on it to come up with that connector. And a DMA controller, yes. Cascaded IRQ2, uh, yes. BIOS data segment, none. And that's what we saw earlier on the debug screen. We saw no extended BIOS data area. So we've gone over enough on MSD to see the output there, F9 to exit. Of course, if we do a directory listing, if I think uh, sequential uh, directory listings, we'll have to see, it still needs to go through and figure out that it's done with the directory listing before we get it returned. Um, so I've got the system information tool that's sit. That might be interesting to see if that runs. And it's not going to identify the the uh, model very well. We will probably, if it runs at all, we'll probably see the same information um, that MSD provided. And let's just see if SIT can run on CGA. <laughs> And if it locks up the system at all uh, for any part of this process, I can just easily go through and reboot. Okay. So this program only supports DOS 4.0 and later versions. So DOS 4.01 is not a later version. Um, I think the system information tool would have more issues with um, the CGA and other things to display information. Uh, I just threw it on there just for enough uh, uh, giggles, as it were. Um, but it is interesting that it, it, that it reports that it needs DOS 4.0 or later. Well, we've got that. Um, So I'm interested for the BIOS view, and I don't remember some of these. These are some of these are UNPC. Okay, so that does it's the um that just does the memory contents at that segment that we looked at just that first line of information from DOS debug. This shows more information. And certainly if you want to see this scrolling on by. Uh, you can pause the video. That was kind of interesting for all that. I mean, it presented that information. Uh, that's, a, that's a command line um, interface of a program that was included with the UNPC programs, uh, not full screen, and looks like that did really good. Um, the CMOS view, it would be interesting if that runs. Because... This effectively has that Motorola 14.6.818 real-time clock chip with that CMOS RAM uh, at the same I.O. port, effectively, as on the IBM AT and many other systems, 286 class and above, had. Um, now, the direct, the, the, how it decodes those uh, will be interesting if it runs. I think it should. But let's see. Okay. So again, if you want to go through and look at a particular area, and I don't think the Motorola, I don't think it has that second bank that it shows all that vendor. Um, well, I mean, it's showing. Maybe. 
Um, and to see the contents, and I can go through and analyze it with that, um, those technical reference listing of what, how that block decodes and everything else. Maybe if I have time, I can go through and do a summary on the video description or a comment or something. Um, so that was kind of cool. I mean, it probably identifies a lot of the fields incorrectly for the PC convertible as compared to the IBM AT and how that CMOS RAM was organized otherwise with those 286 class and above systems. Uh, the CPU test and CPU type, I will have to see. I'm expecting a lockup at some point here uh, for some of these. Um, some of them that where you ran them on an older system that just, but we'll find out. So we have the CPU test. Okay, CPU must be a 26 or later for this test. That's fine. Uh, Frank Van Gilyui went through and, you know, showed that information or, or, uh, wrote the program well enough to handle this instance. We're going to do a CPU type. Okay. So it identifies it there, just like MSD in this case. Um, hard to tell the difference between an 8088 and in 8086, unless you look at that particular model. Now, on the IBMs, you could go through and you could decode that F9 meaning um, a an 80C88, the PC and uh, PCXT, they have uh, FE and FF um, BIOS models. Um, 8086, like the MOL, the MOL 30, MOL 25, PS2s that use the 8086, those are FA. So IBM did go through on the BIOS model and decode between an 8086 and a, an 8088. And so we didn't get it returning back to the command line. And it may have gone through and trying to test a little bit more. Um, I'm saying hang, and we only have the serial type and and uh, and the uh, printer type left to run. I still want to run those because those should actually do output. But we're just going to do a control delete. We still have that boot diskette that we made in Drive A. Battery warning, and yeah, that battery's not good. And it automatically continues after the the two beeps. Okay, the Palm Zip driver loaded once again. No auto exec bat, so it's always going to prompt for time and date. Just press enter, enter. So let's go back to our C drive. Now I could do the directory listing again, but I remember serial type. Okay. <clears throat> and that's correct. It's got uh, an 8250 on this circuit board <clears throat> for these slices. Only that single byte buffer. And then we have the PRN type. <coughs> okay, did I? <coughs> okay, PRN type. It might, oh yeah, it missed the missed the Y. I should have checked, double checked that it typed it in. 
Now we got that little pause for the directory listing. But that's the last program we'll run. And um, I may go through and step back into Microsoft Diagnostic just to get a good thumbnail and everything else and mark it up. Okay, did it type it in correctly that time? It did indeed. Okay, it's active, no extended mode. We didn't expect that anyway. Um, but that's the last little program. Let's start up MSD again. See that nice color come up here in just a moment. And that's pretty good for running on this. And I do have the memory now that we press P for the computer type. Even if it's harder to see in the color mode. And there's probably just some intensity or something else that it goes through and marks that letter. Uh, and that we're not able to see it with just the CGA type display, but P. And that is, I mean, that marking up, and I'll go through and that's just the phase thing. I've got my camcorder bleeding over in that, um, into that lower right corner, of course, as I've been moving around. But I'll go through and I'll black that out probably, and that's how I'm going to come up with the, uh, the thumbnail for this that um, anybody can see. Yeah, I ran MSD on a PC convertible, but did it from the zip drive. We've gone through and done a zip drive identified as the C drive. I mean, it's effectively a hard drive in this case or storage of 100 megabytes on that cartridge, disk cartridge. And um, so an easy way to go through and later work with maybe some programs that won't go through and fit on a 720KB Discat or some other tests that we may want to run. I don't think it'll go through. Um, and CGA screen, I think you and PC, the undocumented PC, the main IO port viewer and things like that went through and uh, was able to handle CGA screens a little bit or kind of reduced. Um, I think it did its character-based full screen. Um, may be able to run through that. We'll see if that goes through and works in a later uh, video. Uh, but this is this is pretty cool for all that. I, I plan on going through and pausing or playing back slow some of the things like the CMOS RAM contents and things like that, because um, those mean different things. And I want to go through and analyze that a little bit more and even look at, um, you know, is there going to be, uh, is there a program that could be done or uh, uh, to change that description of those, uh, of those, all those fields for the PC convertible too? Maybe easy for that if that's a little bit more modular of program uh, that Frank. Van Gilyway did um, for that just to kind of show the contents, but I think it's been cool. Um, and eh, still shy of an hour, 50 minutes or whatever else. But but if you enjoyed the video, enjoyed all this on running a zip drive on a PC convertible from 1985, 1986, when these things were released. Uh, do this beautiful video uh, capture of these things with the updated the retro those retro boards got a Raspberry Pi on it Raspberry Pi Zero um, and going through to later I mean uh, not necessarily as current but enough of a retro step of that zip drive on there too I think it's been kind of cool. So, I don't know. I never click on where I like my own videos or anything like that. I just leave it up to my viewers. But if you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. 
to my channel, recommend to your friends that may be interested in this sort of content too. But that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.